as a project management educator and with a community of project managers who follow my articles, my courses and my YouTube channel. I think it's important that I respond to the COVID-19 crisis with some thoughts because people have been asking me, Mike, what should we be doing as project managers to prepare for this crisis? So in this short video, I'll suggest seven priorities. This may not be the first thing that you do, but it is your first priority and that's your people. It's your team, it's your stakeholders, it's the organization for whom you work and the organizations with whom you come into contact. Events have almost certainly overtaken this video in the sense that I first wrote about this about two weeks ago. But it is absolutely 100% true that your people are more important than your project. Do everything you can to protect them and then think about how you can keep your project going or close it down in an orderly fashion with the resources that you have and using them in a way that is respectful. Do everything you can to minimize people's need for unnecessary travel and for unnecessary gathering. And as project managers, a lot of us are used to working at home. We're used to telecommuting. We're used to being laptop warriors. My second priority, almost certainly the first thing you will have done, certainly the first thing you should do now is to put this onto your risk register. Convene a working group of your smartest, wisest people to think about what are the different scenarios, how will they play out, and what risks do you need to plan for in your project. What you should find is that across a range of scenarios, from the least impact to the worst case scenario, there will be some common factors, and those common factors demand that you act on them straight away. So build those into your project plan and start to take action immediately. The third thing is that you must have conversations now with your sponsor, your boss, your client, for whomever you're doing the project to determine at today whether the right thing to do is to continue your project, to delay it, to slow it down, or to put it on ice and freeze it for a while. There isn't going to be a right decision. There isn't maybe even going to be a best decision, but there is the decision that you take and knowing that you thought it through, knowing that you've made a decision with the best information available to you will give confidence to your stakeholders and it will give confidence to your team. And if you do decide to slow down or pause your project, it will give you time, hopefully, to do so in an orderly fashion. If it's you that takes this issue to your project sponsor, to your clients, to your boss, then you'll be showing yourself as a leader in this situation. But the decision is almost certainly not yours and certainly not yours alone. So make sure you get that proper discussion and proper organizational sign off. Number four is to key into your organizational responses. By now, any halfway decent organization will have started to think about its wider responses and your project needs to fit in with those. And if work is going on as a project manager, there's a good chance you and some of your team will have skills in scenario analysis, in contingency planning and in risk management. So put those at the disposal of your peers and of your organization. Be prepared to get involved in those discussions and to pause your project while you do, if that's the right thing for the wider organizational community. At the same time, you also need to link into the wider business and social communities within which your organization sits. See what your project team, see what you can contribute uh, to their efforts to make sure that your project is properly a part of the community effort. My fifth priority is to think about procurement commitments. And there are two ways this can go. Earlier on, I'd have said you'd be wise to think about bringing your procurement commitments forward, making sure that you can source components, materials, assets that you'll need early 
to ensure continuity. The balance has shifted and now you might need to be thinking about putting your procurement commitments back, knowing that this will have an effect on the companies with whom you're doing business and delaying payment as a result of delaying delivery could have severe impacts for them. But you need to think about your business in the context of that wider community. Absolutely, certainly, you should be sitting down with the procurement professionals, with the service line leads that are involved in your project to think about how the timing decisions around your project will impact your procurement and to take action and speak to your suppliers, speak to your contractors, speak to your consultants about what your plans are and how you and they can create the best possible situation for now and for the relationship going forward. My number six is to keep talking. In times of stress and strain, the worst thing you can do is to withhold communication. People are uncertain. People are scared. As a leader, you need to be calm and cautiously, sensibly optimistic about the future. That's not to say that everything's going to be fine and neither should you portray it as that way. But you do need to be in control and part of that is about communicating actively with your stakeholders, with your team, with your organisation. Because in the absence of communication, people will fill the gaps with gossip and rumour. Even if you know nothing new today compared to what you did tomorrow, just confirming that fact, confirming that things haven't changed is important for people to hear. Be proactive with your communication and take the time to listen to people's concerns and fears and address them as best you can. And you know what? If you don't know the answer, then say, I don't know the answer. I share your concern that this is important and I will do everything I can to find an answer for you. Finally, set up regular reviews a cycle of conversations between you, your senior team and the people to whom you report. Make sure that you are regularly able to review your plans, your scenarios, the decisions you're making. And a part of this, and I did think about having this as a separate thing, is to review the leadership within your project. If you are carrying on, then people are going to fall ill or they are going to have to self-isolate and they're not going to be available for full-time working or for being present. You need to be thinking about that and reviewing your staffing structure, your hierarchies, and indeed the priorities within your project on a day-to-day, maybe almost certainly a week-by-week basis. And think about succession. If you are not able to guide and lead the project because you yourself are ill, then who will step into your place? And what's the process for handover? Make sure that the information is available, that people are used to remote working and can access data and records properly. This is by no means a full list of all the things you'll have to do. It's going to be a long slog. The indications, the way I read the news and interpret it, is that this could be anything from a month to a year of disruption. Almost certainly it's going to be a number of months, two, three, four months. It's probably going to be the autumn before everything gets back to normal as a minimum. Therefore, this is intended to just get you started to thinking about your priorities. Please do comment below to let me know what your priorities are. And also in the description below, I will link to our article that I keep on our website which has these seven points, but crucially, I'm also keeping it updated with references to the very best articles that I find for business and project management users. This is a carefully curated set of articles. It is not the latest opinion on what you should be doing to keep yourself well. There's plenty of that, but it is a set of well thought out from well-respected commentators and organizations, ideas for the impact on businesses and organizations and what you as a leader can be doing. So please take a look at that article, look after yourself, look after your team and good luck. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel as usual. 
But more important, link to our website, have a look at the article that's there, keep up to date with the best information. And if you want to share any of the content that I've got, then just drop me a line and I'll grant you permission. All I require is the proper credit. Thank you very much.